final tournament of Crunches Tour 2024 and it is the single cup. This is one of the strongest tournaments which has been held in St. Louis every single August. We saw one decisive result in the first day and all draws in the second day so I decided to show you the gameplay between Fabiana Corona and Teresa Firuja in the first day of Crunches Tour single cup 2024. We have knight f6 on the board and we are transposing to the Italian game. We saw the Italian game in the game between Gukash and Dean which I analyzed on my channel and now the players go for kind of main line of Italian here b5, knight is7, castle, knight g6, rerouting the knights and generally the game here is kind of you know equal, trollish, kind of boring because both sides know what to do and of course it's always interesting if players can come up with some trap. In d7, rook e8, bishop takes, takes, now at some point on e4 and so that's where interesting things start happening. So e takes d4 is being played and instead of recapturing, which would have been you know not the best option as it turned out, d5 and that's the main idea of black having these positions generally to push d5 and in this case it's actually very strong because here I mean there is no risk involved for black pieces and I mean they're not risking anything in the game probably would have ended in a draw so Fabi plays bishop b2 he decides to sacrifice this pawn on c3 and now the game becomes kind of more interesting but still you know two bishops on the board this bishop on c4 is an absolute monster watching towards f7 pawn Queen is 7, rook d3, rook d8 and just trying to basically trade as many pieces as possible. Bishop g5 takes b4 and slowly the game is going to its end as opposite colored bishops, right? But as we all know, opposite colored bishops might actually you know, make the game more exciting. So queen g6, queen f3, c5, rook c1. And why I was saying that the game was getting to its end is because the position is absolutely equal. And as you can see on the diagram, it's actually all straight. So bishop e2, queen h6, bishop b5 blocking this way. And now it already looked like white can't lose it. I mean, yet there is rook on b2, which is watching towards f2 pawn. But at the same time, this bishop on b5 performs a good troll of blocker. It basically makes sure these rooks are not connected. And what black will need to do is to play rook d6 and try to basically go somewhat this way to make sure this rook maybe goes to the second rank. In f8, rook c2, rook b4, king d3, rook d6. And again, we didn't have many exciting things. The players were just going back and forth. And at some point, Fabio would have actually got an advantage. So we'll scroll to the most critical moment of the game, rook b6, again very very boring, players are going back and forth, Fabi has 4 minutes and Lereza has 55 minutes, bishop f7, king c7, queen g8, bishop f2. So let's let's get to this moment. So queen d7, queen g7, pawn f7 has been threatened, and at this point it looked like, alright, Fabi needed to find the pass move in this position and you see it on, on your engine. It's actually insane that, you know, both players were going back and forth, back and forth and Fabi is the one who could actually gain advantage as after rook c2. I'm not sure what the idea is, the idea is probably to go bishop c4 and go bishop b5. Because it will perform a role of good attacker and after king c7 King G2, let's say, still, it's it's very unclear why computer says it's such a, you know, big deal for white pieces, but it doesn't seem like one. Okay, now, you know, King is on C7, Rook is potentially going this way. Yeah, it becomes kind of unpleasant. Rook F3, yeah, it's kind of understandable why computer thinks it might be a bit, you know, dangerous for black. But instead, what happened, bishop f7, king c7, queen g8, and it still looked like, alright, why have this queen, and this king on c7 has to hide from it. Queen a8, and queen f7, sacrificing the pieces on the blunder, guys. So, Fabi decided to 
basically sacrifice a piece to make game more exciting. So let's see what he was planning. Queen f7, rook b4, takes, rook f2. Because the point is, this bishop was under attack as well. So, basically, let's say why here can take because of the pin, right? So, queen 8, queen f7, and now after like this trade operation, we're again equal. King h2, king b6, and now Alireza is slowly taking the advantage with his hands. Queen c8, queen b7, queen c4, king a7, rook c2, king b7. And again, look, this king doesn't seem safe, but in reality, you know, it's it's quite safe. This picked up upon an a4, and now it's slowly collapsing. Queen a3, queen b4, a4, b2, traded, and now it's a queen and game where queen and king defend each other and are able to promote this b2 pawn and Fabi resign. So second day, no decisive results and Talireza is the sole leader of the tournament after two rounds and as you're watching this video, or probably already the third round finish, I'm not sure how YouTube algorithm will push it. Prague is playing Gukyash, the Indian Derby, Alireza versus Maxim Vashilagraf, Gilneren versus Pestliso, and Jan versus Anish Giri. So, not so many decided results on this one in basically 8 games played, but we have something inter. Oh, actually, wait. 10 games played, 1 decided results, as 5 is playing Nigeria. Yeah. yeah, not a lot of stuff going on. I'll see you next week up tomorrow. Bye-bye.